Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. US 30 there just managed to finish in positive territory yesterday. Uh, again, a little bit flat there today. Didn't hit the highs of, uh, of last Friday, incidentally. So it looks like we might be having a little bit of drift down towards the next potential support at 17.738. And uh, to be fair, it has kind of gone up for, oh, I'm just going to say maybe about 15 to 18 sessions. Um, and only gone down three. Uh, and that is probably inclusive of the fact that there is a lot of uh, pressure building up here on the US 30. It probably could do with having a little bit of a sell-off um, just to take some of that pressure out because otherwise you're just going to have a real slow grind to the upside. So we did have an all-time high there on Friday. We had an all-time high finished yesterday uh, and we're not really getting a huge amount of fall through this morning based on these candles right here. So. Um, if we did get a little bit of drift, 17738 would be an interesting area to look at. So looking at the UK market, looks to be that resistance has held there at 6771. Doji formation on the candles, um, a little bit of a drift down this morning. We are in the middle of two ranges. So 6771 as potential resistance and 6686 as potential support. Technicals are overbought. So looking at the Japan 225, still bouncing around this potential resistance at 17,496. However, we are having a consolidated move along this area, and I suspect we may get a technical breakout at some point uh, as we continue just to kind of have these legs, these candles tick up that little bit higher. So breaking and close above 17,496 uh, would be a, a springboard for a next potential move to 18,306 depending on what dollar yen does next of course looking at dollar yen um, still float bouncing around this 118 level uh, we are quite a good bit away from uh, from 124 spot 20 42 sorry which is the next potential resistance we've talked a lot of times between 120 and 124 being a bit of a danger zone for the Japanese government if that happens too quickly so if we get a long area of sideways moving action on dollar yen that will um, Kind of decrease the likelihood of the Japanese government feeling the need to do anything special around about here, which means we could still get to 124.42 over the longer term. I think that's what they want anyway. You just don't want to get there too quickly. Um, we are almost getting crossover in the MACD. The RSI and still cast that they are certainly uh, overbought, not yet given the signal to sell. Uh, but we are uh, a fair distance away from the next potential support, which is we're all the way down at 114, spot 74. So for those of you who are not currently looking at dollar yen, it's kind of hard to get involved at this level because we are simply in the middle of two ranges as well. So moving on to West Texas crude, it also reversed course again last night. It's looking very unlikely that OPEC are actually going to go ahead and uh, be able to cut production. None of them want to lose revenue, none of them want to lose uh, market share, and Russia is kind of on the, uh, on the ropes there a little bit. Um, and we are looking at another retest of $75. Longer term potential support still remains at 70 spot 41. Uh, and the fact that we had this uh, Chinese rate cut, which should have been a massive shot in the arm for West Texas crude, has failed to materialize, which just leads me to believe that the, the downwards pressure will continue on, um, perhaps unabated. So looking at gold next, um, gold uh, still trading between two ranges, 1186, 1218 trading between two moving averages here as well the technicals are neutral this is probably one of the least exciting products that uh, I'm currently looking at um, moving on to your dollar your dollar did manage to bounce of 123.67 uh, feels just a little bit of a, of a short squeeze there incidentally um, I wouldn't be that surprised if we continue to see um, a little bit of downwards action there though the um, Recent IFO data from Germany was okay, and the latest US data was a little bit soft, to be honest. Um, we'll start to wait to see what macro data is coming out. We do have US GDP due later on today, which could act as a catalyst, but um, we did have a good session yesterday. We did close at the top end of that range, but we've not fallen through again there today. So a drift back down to 2367 could be on the cards if US GDP um, doesn't disappoint. I'm finishing up with cable. Uh, cable has a uh, trying to retrace back to 157.43 it's moved back to, down to the downside again we are definitely seeing a consolidation round about this potential resistance the question is for traders out there is this going to be uh, a resistance level capping any gains on cable pushing it back down to 154.24 
which a lot of uh, commentators have highlighted, or are we going to be able to get our head above there and rechallenge one spot 59.00? That seems a little bit more of a, of, of a long shot, but it all depends on the current US fundamentals, and obviously that GDP figure will impact cable later on today as well. So looking at the, at the economic data, uh, we obviously mentioned GDP and the US. Um, that's due at 1.30 UK time. Uh, if you've not already set your alarms for that, make sure you do. Uh, recurring alerts here work quite well, so you just have to set it up once and it'll always come back through. And um, we do have um, some C, uh, CCI data due out later on today as well. That's at 3 p.m. UK time. So two bits of decent US data to help uh, help drive the markets in, a, in one direction. We fast forward onto Wednesday. We've got UK GDP, so if you're a cable trader, again, that could be quite interesting. But then we've got US durable goods, and um, you've got unemployment claims um, for that Wednesday as well, not to mention uh, pending sales for housing as well. So if you're looking at the at the Dow, the SPX 500, your dollar, cable, dollar, yen, there is a, a fair amount of US macro data to, um, to add a little bit of volatility in the markets. Keep your eye on the chart form as ever, make insights part of your layout, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happens next.